Hello, welcome back to the latest episode of You Are My Borough, myself, Dom Shaw, Scott Wilson, as ever, with our uh, Leeds United preview, as promised, and we're delighted to be joined by Do- Joe Donoghue, who covers Leeds for the Yorkshire Evening Post. How are the nerves, Joe? Nice, relaxing few weeks for you? Uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a, an interesting couple of weeks um, from a from a sort of Leeds reporting perspective. Um, going from you know winning thirteen games out of fifteen to to then losing two out of three, and the um, the 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 back to back home games against Sunderland and Blackburn were kind of seen as a okay, well you know what we need to put these teams to bed, and then we'll see what the what, how the land lies going into the final three. But um, yeah, that's not how it transpired. Obviously, drawing against Sunderland and then losing sort of very late on to Blackburn. Um, it's definitely put a, a cat amongst the pigeons for sort of any uh, any promotion planning. So, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting couple of weeks starting on, on Monday night. It, it must be at that stage because we were, we were there this time last year, weren't we, Scott, where you know the ins and outs of every single schedule of every team between now and the end of the yeah. season, the, poten- the potential pitfalls, the potential challenges. It takes us back to last yeah. year. Yeah. It does, and, and funny enough, I I was at the Sunderland game as well. <clears throat> um, obviously, covering it from a Sunderland perspective for the Echo, and um, I, I love going to Leeds. I love going to Ellen Road. I think it's a proper atmosphere, marching on together, all of that. My God, by the second half of that game, it was edgy. It was nervy. It was you could just tell that that it was kind of God. We need something to happen here, and it's just, just not going to. Mm. Um, and I think it, I think from a Leeds perspective, it'll probably be like that on Monday night because famous last words here, but I, I really expect Borough to give them a right good game. Leeds are going to have to really work for this. And I think I think it's got, yeah, it's got real edginess. And, and you know, clearly we'd all love from a Borough's perspective to be at the heart of it and involved in it. But even without that, it's going to be some last two weeks in this championship because at the minute, it feels like none of the three can win a game. So... It's um, it's going to be fascinating, like, and and you know, it goes without saying, absolutely massive for Leeds on um, on Monday night. Just before we just before we 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 go into the game at great depth, Scott, just one kind of news line to pick up on, really, from um, since we last spoke, Isaiah Jones signing a new contract, a new three year yeah. commitment, his future at the club until twenty twenty seven. Great news. Yeah, and and. But... Another kind of on the back for Borough actually getting their house in order and getting these deals done. Because how many times in the last decade or so have we bemoaned the fact that Borough constantly seem to leave these things until the last minute and leave themselves open to trouble and rumour and speculation and whatever. So I think the fact that, you know, this has been sorted so early before he's even got into the last 12 months is a real positive. And, you know, we've talked about it plenty enough on previous pods, haven't we, that you know, a fit and firing Isaiah Jones is right up there in terms of wide attackers in the championship. Hasn't always been like that in the last two seasons for a variety of different reasons. Injury, you know, we know the kind of mental health issues that he was very open about in the second half of last season. But but when he's right, he's as good as there is out there really at championship level. And so it's, it's just a positive for Borough that it's done this early, I think. Yeah, and, and, and just one quickly on Jones before we, before we go back to John talk about the Leeds game. I think you can sometimes see the importance of a player by how much they missed when they're not there. And of yeah. the six games that Borough missed after he suffered that injury against Rotherham, and Borough lost four of them, only won one in the league. And there was the Chelsea away game when he was desperately missed, wasn't he? There, his pace was so his pace was so crucial to the to the game plan of of beating Chelsea, wasn't it? He was so yeah. solid in this that night at Stamford Bridge. That second leg was a real of all the players that were out of that. You're right because he he potentially might have got Borough up the field when they were under the cosh so badly in that first half. Um, he definitely has been missed. I mean, I think if you look at his bare stats, then in terms of goals and assists, he can do an awful lot better. And I, and I take the fact that that he had those two months out with injury, but I still think in terms of end product, that's where he now needs to kick on to the next yeah. level at next season because. He is massively important to the way Borough play. Certainly when they're counter-attacking away from home, he's crucial. I suspect he'll be a key player against Leeds, although as we'll get to with the Luke Ayland thing, he might well be playing at right-back or right-wing-back rather than right-wing. I'm sure we'll discuss that further down the line. But but um, but um yeah, the next thing with, for, for Jones is just to get more goals and assists on the board because for all the threat and all the importance it is, those numbers probably still aren't high enough. Le- Leeds then, Joe, when, when this game was moved to a Monday night, 
the kind of general fear on Borough was, my God, that's got a Leeds promotion party written all over it. Burnley went up at the Riverside last season. That was difficult enough to take. For Borough fans to see Leeds do that would have been would have been hard to stomach. Um, obviously, it hasn't gone to plan. What Scott touched on it there, that the edginess when he was at Ellen Road. What's the general feeling now around Leeds? Um, I mean, you could probably categorise people into two camps. And I mean, Scott will know having covered Leeds before, but there's a there does appear to be sort of an inbuilt pessimism with Leeds fans uh, that kind of comes with the territory of supporting the club um, because they've been burnt so many times before, uh, particularly with the playoffs um, in whichever league that's been. Um, they they do have this right. Well, that's it. It's, it's over sort of view or at least that's some of them do it would be you know a mischaracterization to say all of them all of them are like that but um there's i think you'll have some who are like well okay look it's we're only two points off the top we're one point off the automatics you know everybody else is is sort of stumbling over each other um so there's 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 obviously a massive massive opportunity and if you know you'd said to leeds fans at christmas when they were 16 17 points behind um then you know, the, the chance to still potentially win the title, as, as unlikely as it is, um, you know, they'd have snapped your hand off. So it you, you could separate, you know, the, the, the feeling into into two camps. I think the with the squad and Daniel Farker, they they've they've reiterated throughout this season, you know, we're not getting too high when we win, we're not getting too low when we lose. I think the 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 sort of the underlying numbers of the the last couple of games as well. It suggests that they haven't. That I mean, apart from the Sunderland game, which you know Sunderland were very effective at limiting them to chances, particularly from open play, there hasn't really been a dearth of of, of opportunities. It's just that they haven't been clinical. So I think um, the the it, it could the, the Borough game is is a, is a make or break basically because I don't see both of the other teams and Southampton now as well as in Ipswich, Leicester, and Southampton. I don't see two of those three teams slipping up again. Um, on 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 the same weekend that Leeds do, so it really is a case of you know they need to win, or you know the hopes of automatic promotion are you know really really hanging in the balance, and that's kind of where I think that that nerviness, the the edginess is is coming from because it was so close for it, well it was so far away for so long, then they got a taste of actually you know what we might go and do this, and now it feels as though it's kind of very very slowly slipping away, and again that's never it's never a nice uh, a feeling to have. Um, and what what from 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 the outside looking in, what what does the trip to Borough look like? What 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 did, what have you made of of the of, of Borough's season? What have you made of Carrick's team? What have you made of the job he's done this season? And 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 the, and the challenge facing Leeds on Monday night. Yeah, I mean it's not a straightforward game by any means. I know that obviously the the playoff hopes for Borough are are very slim. Um, but I, again, you you can't see this team coached by Carrick rolling over. Uh, especially not at home, you know what? What is it? The penultimate home game of the season. You, you don't. You, that's not. That's not what I associate with this Borough team. Um, I think they've got a lot of interesting, um, interesting players. Uh, particularly, I mean, with Emmanuel Latte Lat's form. Um, you know, Hayden Hackney. I think is a fantastic midfielder. Um, and I know there's. I know there's injuries in the camp. And I know that Luke Alien's not going to be able to play. I know that Sam Greenwood's not going to be able to play. But you know, it comes down to I think the coaching element, and you know. Yes, there was the, the difficult start to the season that I think a lot of people didn't expect, considering how last season ended. Um, but the way that you know they went on that that big un, unbeaten run through the middle of the year uh, or the middle of the season, um, and I, I'm, I'm just generally impressed with with Carrick the way that he you know carries himself. He's very assured and his, his teams play sort of in his image. And yeah, I think Leeds will will have uh, an issue on their hands if they're not at 100 percent on Monday. You suspect, given Carrick's association with the football club, that he spent most of his playing career at, that he'd take great satisfaction in in uh, denting Leeds' promotion hopes on one, on Monday night, wouldn't you, Scott? Um, it leads on with them. We'll come back to Ailing and Greenwood, and there's a few players we want to talk about. But um, we've we've touched on Sunderland and how they approached the game. Joe touched on Borough's injury troubles. D do you expect Borough to set up with a back three and wing backs on Monday night? And if not. Who fits in the role of Ailing Greenwood? How do you expect? Borough yeah, I think there's a good chance because we, 
I've seen Sunderland play Leeds twice now, and they beat them at the Stadium of Light, and obviously they got the draw at Ellen Road. Now, I know that's a very small sample size, and Joe will have infinitely more knowledge of how Leeds set up and where their threat, threats are. But in those two games, Sunderland switched to five at the back in both games, and I thought did a really good job of containing Leeds out wide. Because when I look at Leeds, I think Somerville is right up there in terms of what there is in the Championship. They've obviously got James on the other flank. None know if he plays. I think if you can funnel Leeds inside into a fairly congested central area, that's the best way of containing them. Because for me, when I've seen Leeds at the best this season, it's been with the likes of Somerville and James cause an absolute havoc, either out wide or cutting in. Um, so I think Carrick would have been tempted to go with five, come what may. I think the fact that Luke Ealing is not available. So if you're going to play a flat back four, You've either got to play Jones as an out-and-out out fullback, which which isn't his best position, or you've probably got to bring Dyke Steele in, which Carrick has, has been really loath to do pretty much all season. Um, I think there's a good chance it'll be a back five with um, Jones and probably Engel as the wing backs. Yeah, I do. Which which would then give you which would then give you the um, decision of who drops into the central centre of defence. Housen. With Barlasa coming in to the midfield, do you think that's most likely? On the assumption that Dale Fine, which, yeah. which I think we can Lennon. probably assume, if Fine's fit and right, then, then he will go in and Housen will stay in midfield. Mm -hmm. I think we've got to assume, obviously, um, you're a Michael Carrick's presser later today, Don, so you'll get a bit of an update potentially. I, I use the word potentially, yeah, uh, advisedly <laughs> there with the way that uh, Carrick keeps his cards close to his chest. But on the proviso that there's no fry, yeah, I think Housen goes centre half. And, and and I mean, Housen's a fascinating one because he's he's Mr. Borough. He's been at Borough for so long now. He's had all these contracts. He'll get another, and yet deep down, he's a massive Leeds fan. He oh, still yeah. leads, whether yeah. it be Leeds United, Leeds Rhinos, whatever. So I I think it's you know what? it's not it's not a dynamic. He's the ultimate professional. He's Borough captain. It's not it's not something that comes into his mind. But it's an interesting one because all his family and friends are still Leeds. You know, it, it, it's, got, it's got to be a slight interesting dynamic for him, hasn't it? It has. And, and, I, and I think touching on um, Dyke Steele that you mentioned there, Dyke Steele has played centre-half. Dyke Steele is, it, it, it is a good fit for right of a back three, but he just hasn't featured under Carrick, does he? Clearly, he's not clearly he's not part of Carrick's plan. So I think it's more likely if, if that is... If that is the way he sets up, that Housen steps in rather than rather than Dyke Steele coming in. Or well, Brian will obviously play yeah. midfield. Barlasa steps in, presuming Hayden Hackney is not going to be fit. Again, I think that's very, very unlikely. Um, and the other one is with Sam Greenwood unavailable, who comes in? Sam Sammy Silvera didn't really take his chance at Ipswich, but they haven't really got anyone else. No, there's not a lot of other options, is there? Again, on the assumption that there's no Hayden Hackney, which I think we can pretty safely assume. So... I think it, I think if if it is going to be five at the back, then I think it would have to be Silvera. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you think, Joe, that 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 is how to put have have Leeds struggled more against that kind of back five in general all season, or has it just been outliers the two Sunderland games that we've kind of seen against them? If you know what I mean. No, I think you're right. I mean, the typically when Leeds are forced inside into sort of the congested central areas particularly against teams that employ like a low block and, you know, they sit deep, they absorb pressure. That's where Leeds have struggled. I think, you know, in the in the recent games, Sunderland in particular, uh, you know, Blackburn employed um, a similar strategy. Obviously, that wasn't a back five, but again, they they sat very narrow and then their, their wide players were then effectively, you know, auxiliary fullbacks. Um, yeah. Teams that have done that, Leeds have found it very difficult to break down. Now, I, you know, I, I was sort of trying to explore this yesterday. Is you know is that because they don't have that that number ten type player or the, the archetypal number ten that is is able to sort of unpick defenses with with you know slide real passes between the the full back and the centre half? Is it because they maybe don't have the requisite experience in in the attack? Um, because you know they they do have a very young attack. Bamford aside, um, is it because they don't really have a striker who's going to run onto things off off the shoulder? Um, it's it it's it's a really interesting one, um, but I do think that Borough's best chance of, of getting a result, and I mean you know like three points, would be to to sit back, absorb, absorb pressure, and let Leeds have the ball. You know when when they've had yeah. seventy plus percent possession this season, 
they've they've typically lost or they've drawn. You know, they've they've been some of their more disappointing performances. Um, and yeah, a lot of that is game state dependent. But I mean, yeah, they they I think if Borak tried to come out and play and and go toe to toe with Leeds, given that Borak have so many injuries, you know, so many important players out, and Leeds don't really have that many injuries to to key to key areas. I do think Leeds will be able to pick them off on the counter or, you know, in, in transition. Yeah. Um, I think sitting deep is probably the, the best the best outcome, uh, sorry, the best strategy to, to get a, a good outcome for Borough. Because I think, Scott, you, not, not, only, not, only, not only are the Sunderland games the example to look at here, but the first fixture between these sides, it was a basketball yeah. game. It was end to end. It was a basketball game. Borough had no control, and Carrick loves control in games, doesn't he? Yeah. Um, so I think I think he not only looks at those two Sunderland games, but that that first game for Borough to stand any chance. First of all, they need to get a grip of the game, don't they? And, and I'll throw another one in here: the Leicester home game. Yeah, yeah, which Where, was a similar... a, you know a, a similar kind of scenario, and Carrick did tinker formation wise and kind of the way that he set Burr up there and in some ways he did exactly that didn't he he almost said that we'll, we'll accept the fact that Leicester are probably going to have more of the ball but we're going to do them damage on the break I just wanted to touch on one there Joe that you raised Bamford who um I mean it, I think it's safe to say he was a pretty streaky striker when he was at Borough he had some amazing days one in particular amazing season my goodness, he's a streaky striker at Leeds, isn't he? I mean, there was a spell when Leeds were in the Premier League where Bamford was pretty much unplayable. Did he get in an England squad? Or he was certainly on the fringe of an England squad. And yet, it feels like for certain chunks of this season, he's back to looking like he couldn't hit a barn door. I mean, it, you're right in saying that he's very streaky. Um, I do think he's a very much a confidence player. Um you know, started the campaign second fiddle to, to Joel Piru and then sort of turn of the year came and, and he was back in the team, scored four and five um, and was was generally really important to the way Leeds played. It was kind yeah. of an evolution. And that was that was key to them basically not losing a game between, you know, January and April. Um, he is in a bit of a, a rough patch at the moment. I think it's five or six without a goal. You know, there's fans... Uh, suggesting that you know he shouldn't be the starting number nine for the remainder of the season um he's, he's kind of always been a little bit of a lightning rod for fans because of that streaky mm. nature that you know he yeah. he does he does bring a lot to the team you know his off ball running is very selfless yeah you know what you're going to get from him in terms of that side of the game he's always going to pull defenders around and, and put himself forward for chances yeah he's he, he's he's a very intelligent striker i'd say it's just that he's not always on the end of things when you want, you know, you you want an instinctive number nine to be in the box, you know, throwing everything that he has at a ball that's flashed across the six yard box. And, you know, there's been occasions where he's maybe been in, in a bit of poor form and he's had a chance and he's missed them or, you know, he's had penalties and, you know, they've, he's sky, he skied one against Stoke earlier this season. And it was like, why, why was Bamford the one taking that penalty? Um, and yeah, I do feel as though it's 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 for him. It's a big confidence thing. Um, mm. I mean, yeah, as you said, you got 17 goals in the Premier League when when Leeds went up for the first that first season, got a cap for England, um, but then since then had you know massive injury issues for the you know the resulting yeah. two Premier League seasons. This year hasn't really been. I mean, he he's, he has been in the side for the past you know three three four months, but the first. You know, part of the season, he was he was a he was a supplementary part. So, mm. yeah, it, it is an interesting one. Whether he didn't start the last game, whether he he comes back into the side, considering that Leeds didn't score, I could I could see it happening. But I think a lot of fans yeah. probably want to see uh, young Matteo Joseph given the chance because he's been very lively and he's been very impactful. And an out of form, an out of form Patrick Bamford Dorma has the typical Borough klaxons ringing left, right, and centre, doesn't it? <laughs> He had he had two unplayable spells at Borough Joe. So the first one was obviously very early in his career when he won the Championships Player of the Year award, did, didn't he? He did, didn't he? Yeah. In, when Borough yeah. just missed out on promotion and any he, he played in the playoff final when he wasn't fit. Um when he wasn't fit, Borough, yeah. Hobbled around, didn't he? And then he around came kind of impact, didn't he? Yeah, he came back in the in the Premier League relegation season, didn't he? Struggled, but then at the end 
under Pulis, he had that spell, didn't he? When he scored those two great goals against Sunderland, and then he went at a time when um, when when Borough were having to to cut costs a little bit. But he is a player that's always intrigued Borough fans, I think, isn't it? Because of what, because of the potential, really, and because of, and I guess it, and I guess that's why maybe there's a frustration from the Leeds fans because because we've all seen what he's capable of, what he can do when he's on. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's, there's a, he, there's a little sense as well that if he had been fully fit for that playoff final, maybe it would have made the difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, another player to come to you, Joe, if you don't mind. Uh, Scott mentioned it that that game when Borough beat Leicester earlier in the season, Sam Greenwood scored the winner that day, and he had a spell after that when he was when he was Borough's match winner. And it, and he looked like an absolute snip. News emerged that there was a deal potentially agreed for for Borough to sign him on a permanent deal for one point five million pounds. Now. Clearly, if Leeds go up, he's in line to get a, a wage increase at Leeds and that and that muddies the water slightly. But there's also now the debate as to whether Borough will want to take up the permanent deal because he has had a disappointing second half of the season. What what are your thoughts? What, what What's the Leeds thoughts on Greenwood in general and this season and how it's played out for him at Borough? I think, I mean, he's always been a prospect. You know, they signed him four years ago from Arsenal. Um, he was, you know, one of the best players in the the under twenty threes team that was was very very successful, um, and it, rightly, I think he he did break into the first team sort of here and there. But you know, this the start of the season, it, it was very apparent that if Leeds were to go up automatically, they were going to need just that little bit extra. In, in the way of maybe star quality or experience or, or a little combination of both. He's never really had a, a, a defined role. Um, you know, he's played, I mean, Bielsa thought he could, he could play as a six. Uh, Jesse Marsh played him as a, as a number eight. Um, you know, he's, I, I've always thought his best position is in number 10. Right. Um, but then there's also been, you know, he's played out wide and he, I mean, it's, it's in his youth, youth days, he was, he was playing as a center forward. So, He's never really had sort of a positional home, which again probably didn't help. That when you know every time a new manager came in, he was always having to prove himself. Um, I think he's fantastic in terms of dead ball situations. Um, you know that's that's one area which Leeds are not great in, uh, and could certainly do with a player of his quality. Um, but you know, there's, there's I don't know if it's been the case at Borough, but he does have a tendency to shoot when a pass is probably the better option. Um, and I, I just think that. I mean, one and a half million is is Leeds letting him go on the cheap. I think he's somebody who has the potential, as you say, to be a match winner. Um, but there comes a point where you have to think: Well, are we? I mean, are we going to use this player? You know, if we're if we're wanting to go up and we want to sustain ourselves in the Premier League, you know, we're probably not going to need a player that we didn't need in the Championship, sort of thing. So, I think they, Leeds would be would be happy to see him go um, on on a permanent deal. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely a player with a lot of talent there, and again, still very young. They can still actually develop into, you know, whether it is a number ten or whether it is sort of an attacking number eight. Um, yeah, I think one and a half million is 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 probably fair market value when you take into consideration that that poor second half of the season at Borough. I thought Fark's comments were good earlier this season when he basically said if if football allowed managers to make a set piece substitution, then. Sam Greenwood would be extremely valuable in your squad. Mm. Clearly, that's not the case. I know you touched on it a bit there, but is is Fark the type of manager who would would have another look at Greenwood in the summer and, and would back himself maybe to, to polish off the rough edges, or will his mind be made up if if he let him go last summer? Will his mind be made up on him? Is is there very little chance of Greenwood forcing his way back into his plans? I, I think I get the impression from Daniel Farker that he's he's very much a mind made up manager. When when a decision is made, then that's kind of that's kind of final. And and <clears throat> a lot of the the loan the, the outgoing loans this season, they did feel as though they were soft goodbyes. You know, um, I mean, obviously Luke Ayling because his contract's expiring. Cody Drama as well. Um, that felt like a very soft goodbye. Um, and then all of the other sort of the 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 international players, your Brendan Aronsons, Max Verber, Mark Rocker. Those types of players that that left on loan because um, they, you know, thought that a year in the championship would be detrimental to their careers, particularly internationally. Um, I, I I can't really see Farker reintegrating loan players that he hasn't needed in a season where they have, you know, it, it, it would it would I think it would send the wrong message that you know the the squad has been important this year. Everyone has really played a role, and if Leeds are to go up, uh, whether that's automatically or through the playoffs. 
then you'd, you'd want to reward them by giving them an opportunity rather than bringing somebody back in who hasn't really played a, played a part. Um, so I think, yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, never say never, but I think given that, you know, the second half of the season hasn't been as fruitful, shall we say, as the first for, for Greenwood, I, I don't really see him him being considered as, a, as someone who will be reintegrated unless, you know, Leeds do stay down in the championship and then, you know, need to make some some decisions on on players who may need to be jettisoned to, to you know, raise raise cash. And, and and just the other one, Aileen, you won't be at all surprised to hear that he's established himself as a favourite with Borough fans, are you? Yeah, I mean, he, he's, he w- remains and always will be a favourite at Leeds, um, just for his, you know, the, the, there's there's a thing at Leeds called the ailing flop, which is, you know, when I'm sure you'll have seen it, you know, he goes down under pressure and it is the, the slightest of touches, but the referee always buys it. And it's like <laughs> ailing flop, 22nd minute. Um, <laughs> that's because that's that's the first one of the day. Um, he's and McNair's yeah, he's good a great at that character. as well. They can, they can, they'll, they'll, they'll bounce off each other, then too. McNair's great at buying a foul in his own, in his own half. Yeah, he's. I mean, he he was in the the peacock over the road from Ellen Road um, the the other week, um, buying fans pints and and all that sort of thing before one of the games. Um, yeah, he's he's for his for his role that he played in promotion four years ago and then in the in the Premier League, and also just his his character. You know, he's a he. he I mean, he was a massive massive part of the Leeds dressing room. Um, he always fronted up for interviews when when the going got tough. Um, yeah, he's someone who is always going to be thought of fondly at Leeds. Um, so yeah, it's just just be interesting to see who he's who he's going to be supporting on Monday night. <laughs> Borough, obviously. Um, <laughs> predictions, Scott, you go first. What are we saying? Yeah, um, I'm sorry, Joe. I, I I think Borough might squeak this. You know, I'm going to go two one Borough, but I think Leeds will go up. I've, I've, I still think Leicester and Leeds will be the two. Southampton and Moody in the waters now, aren't they? They're making mm. a right run at it. But I still think Leeds and Leicester to go up. But I think Borough might win this 2-1. Scott, Scott, back, Scott back, the winner of the National and the winner of the Masters last week, Joe. So that, that <laughs> oh, was you. No. That was you. That was you. I've been taking his word on that and having a double on Leeds to get beat at the Riverside and still go up. What about you then? And I was going to say, a prediction for Monday and... How do you see the final weeks playing out at the top? Um, I'm going to go the inverse to Scott. I think it's going to be a two-one away win for Leeds. Um, I, I think if they if they are to get promoted and if they are to get back to winning ways, then they have to do it here because you know the games the games run out, and because of the um, because of how the fixtures lie, I think it's I think Southampton play four times before Ipswich next play or something something daft like that or they three three more times because they played in midweek yeah. didn't they um I, I just think it could potentially get away from them and then obviously all the psychological element of we're chasing again and we're, we're we're running out of games and um I think they have they have to win uh, on Monday night if they are to to sort of keep themselves in the race I honestly could not call who goes up over the past couple of weeks, it's just been everyone leapfrogging each other or everyone stumbling over each other. Um, Southampton now coming back into the mix does really make things interesting because of all their games. Well, their game in hand against Leicester. The fact that the game in hand is against Leicester itself is, you know, a, a really interesting subplot to, and, and to the last few weeks. Southampton on the last day. Yeah, <laughs> wow. and that's that's the final day. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The, 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 honestly, it, it it is shaping up to be absolute carnage. I always say the championship is the best league in the world, unless you're trying to get out of it or trying to stay out of it. Like it's yeah. it is it is. I mean, this year this year in particular has been fascinating to watch, um, and especially from sort of the perspective of being a reporter at a club that has been you know out of it and then sort of gradually coming back into it. And yeah, the 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 drama is 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 unmatched, but. Yeah, I I have a sneaky feeling that I think Ipswich because they've got nothing to lose or the least to lose. I think that they they, they won't be feeling the press pressure as much, and I think they'll go up automatically. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, uh, Southampton. Are you, you going to are you going to completely sit on the fence treble by going for a draw? <laughs> no, I fancy Borough. I fancy Borough on Monday. Um, I think I'll go with you. I, I fancy Borough to win two one. Um. And then what does that mean for the promotion? I, I think Southampton, because I just think the dynamic of 
you know, Russell Martin a couple of weeks ago was yeah. talking about now we've got to get prepared for the for the playoffs. This this is a second chance that they won't have expected. Um, the one thing with Southampton is it, it, they, they do throw in a result every now and again, don't they? So they're at Cardiff yeah. this weekend. For all for all I'm saying, it wouldn't surprise me if Southampton now go up automatically. Wouldn't surprise me if they lost at Cardiff this weekend <laughs> either. So that's the championship, yeah. isn't it? Um, I I don't fancy Leicester. I, I think it's I think it'll be two from Ipswich Leeds and Southampton. And, and I agree with Joe. I think clearly the game at Borough on Mondays is huge for Leeds. Just before we wrap up, Scott, clearly there's not as much on the line from a table perspective as Borough. But Leeds at home yeah. with all that's on the line for, for, for the visitors and, and the nine game unbeaten run, it still has a feel of a big game for Borough, doesn't it? Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think, I think in, you know, realistically, the final two games of the season, Cardiff away, Watford at home, Carrick will try and dress it up, but, but they feel like largely irrelevant dead rubbers. Leeds at home with Leeds going for the title slash promotion is Absolutely not an irrelevant dead rubber. It is, you know, Borough, the Borough fans, the Borough players, Carrick himself, nobody will need getting up for this on Monday night. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be, um, I mean, you know, it, it's the last big game of the season for Borough, isn't it? Let's be brutally honest about it, but it's a cracker. It is, absolutely. Well, we'll have full reaction from Michael Carrick's press conference at Rockcliffe on Friday afternoon and then full build-up across the weekend and, of course, live updates on the night from the Riverside. Do subscribe if you haven't already to the YouTube channel. If you're listening on podcasts and rate a review as we give you a nudge to do every week. Thanks very much, Joe. I'll ignore the – I'll avoid, sorry, the good look. The classic, the classic when managers meet who know each other. Uh, I, I wish them well, but only after full time on Saturday. On Monday, on Saturday <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I'll avoid yeah. all that. But thanks very much for joining us. It, it's uh, It's been great to get the Leeds perspective. No, thanks for having me, lads. It's been, uh, it's been a joy. Brilliant. Thank thanks, you. Joe. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you on Monday night at the Riverside. See you on Monday thanks night. Again.